Hello everyone, welcome to the first recap of 2021. Happy New Year and I hope you all had a great start to this new year and that it's all for everyone it's going to be better than the previous one which wasn't all bad but wasn't exactly something to write home about. And for those who are new to Makeover Monday and to these recaps I want to briefly explain how they work. So typically every week at the end of the week I'm going to do a recap either Friday, that's ideal or Saturday if I run out of time and the recap is the place where I will share a couple of lessons learned from the week and I'm also going to share the favorites that I've selected and the lessons learned are meant to be something for you to use to then address maybe next week and see okay is that something you want to put into practice and the favorites of course are meant to serve as inspiration but also as a little round of applause for those who were selected for the week and while I look at every submission for the week, please don't feel upset if you're not chosen. Like these are, this is a recognition and I know that people appreciate it, but at the same time, the world will not end or, you know, uh, something amazing will happen if you get chosen or it will not end if you don't get chosen. So um, we don't keep track of who is part of the favorites. Of course, we notice people's work over time, but please don't put too much importance on this. It's really meant to be a recognition of people's work that is really good in terms of analysis and or design, um, the style of this, but also just the storytelling. So the things that we look out for, we want to highlight when they were done really well. I'm always going to cover the lessons learned first to keep you paying attention until the favorites, which come as the second part. And I've got three lessons learned this week. I always write a few notes uh, uh, throughout the week of what I've noticed. Um, and as I go through, so typically on a Thursday or Friday, when I choose my favorites and I look through all the submissions, I find things that stand out in a good way, but also some things that stand out that I think, oh, you know, I think as a community, we should address this. We should get better at doing this in the future. So for this week's recap and this week's lessons learned, here is number one. And that is probably something that sounds a bit humorous, but I'm actually serious about it. Don't just do what Andy does. So I saw on Sunday he submitted his viz and then immediately afterwards there were lots of vizs that were very much the same. It's a great idea to take inspiration from people who've been around, who know what they're doing, who do it really well. And certainly Andy does, there's no doubt about it. But just because Andy does it doesn't mean you have to do it. Um, I think it's a good place to learn, but also feel free to do your own thing. And um, I think this week, given the nature of the data, there was a lot of line charts and these barbell charts, but feel free to completely put your own spin on it. So if you do the same type of chart, at least it looks uniquely like yours, given the, the styling, the font, the color, the layout, uh, just because then it won't get drowned out in this sea of sameness. So yeah, don't just do it because Andy does it. I, I also know that he sometimes makes it a little bit of a game and he will create a chart that's not best practices to see how many people simply copy it because he does it uh, without questioning whether it's the right thing to do. So don't get trapped and always question what others do, even if they are Zen masters in the Hall of Fame. My next lesson, lesson number two, is to reduce the amount of jargon you use. This week, there were quite a few visits that I thought were really good visually and in terms of storytelling, but they used this term that I just really don't like, or what they call TLAs, three-letter acronyms, year over year, why oh why. I know it's quite commonly known, this um, acronym or this abbreviation, but really, when we talk about bikes rather than financials, no one wants to read why or why. We want to read year over year or 2019 compared to 2020 or 2020 compared to 2019. Make it suitable for the audience. If your audience is the internet, which is what it is when you post it on Twitter, make it something that any lay person who is not experienced with data visualization or with these kind of terms could understand without having to look it up or feel like maybe they should know it but they don't and they feel a little bit stupid. So I think year over year, I mean it's totally fine to use as a, as a metric, I have no problem with that, but I don't like seeing YOY as an abbreviation in a viz about something that's not financial data, you know, revenue data, that kind of stuff. 
or general inside the business data. If you are producing visas that are meant to be for a broad audience, make sure that everything you say and write in there is really accessible and is not, I guess, excluding people because they might not be familiar with the terminology. And last but not least, this is a very important lesson and I would recommend to apply it throughout the year of Maker One Day, but also kind of any other projects you might participate in in this community. And that's to not just visualize the data, but to read the article, read what it is about so that you truly understand what the metrics are and what to do with it. And also in the analysis, you know, be critical. Uh, this project I know is mainly about improving the visualizations that we put out there, but it's a great opportunity to build your skills as an analyst. And being an analyst goes beyond putting data into visual form. It's about challenging maybe the assumptions in the article, finding new insights, and you can't always find new insights, but try it anyway, because that builds your analyst muscles. And I know that there is a temptation, especially with tools like Tableau and others that make it so easy to put data into a visual format. It's very easy and very tempting to just say, hey, double click, double click, and I'm done but that doesn't show that you're a good analyst. And we want to help you show that visually, but also by building your portfolio and through the type of analysis you do. Because every time you make a submission, it's not just a picture that you create. It's also that if you build your portfolio and you maybe apply for a job externally or you want a promotion internally and you're trying to show your skills, the analysis contained in your weekly submission is going to evolve over time. You're going to get more and more advanced in what you do and the kind of conclusions you come to and how you communicate that information. So for that purpose, it's really important to absorb some of that context that we provide through the article or additional information that we upload. And digesting all of that and building that into your story, whether it's something very intense and elaborate or something very light and concise, uh, but showing that. So go beyond the visualizing and try to really do some of the analysis and bringing the insights from the text and the article into what you've created. So that's my three lessons for this week. Let's move over to the favorites. Okay, so my first person on the favorites list is Ravi Kumar. And what I like about his visualization is that it's really nice and clean. The title is informative, but it's short enough to be, you know, concise. But at the same time, it's long enough to give me the understanding of what I'm looking at. I like the colors that he's chosen, even though they're not very outdoorsy. You know, it's it's blue and pink. It's not very outdoorsy, but they have a nice uh, contrast and they have a good difference from each other. And using this area chart um, worked really well because he's... Um, unstack the marks so they're not on top of each other but kind of behind and in front and that becomes obvious when you look at the pedestrian data and you see the transparency of the spike in week 21. I like his little annotations as the you know restrictions begin and then restrictions being lifted I think that's really helpful and I just think overall this is a great viz. Number two is from MIDI and we looked at this viz that's done in um, Google Data Studio, and it's just really, really cool. So I encourage you to check it out. The links for every single one of these favorites is posted in the descriptions below this video. And what I really like is just his use of color um, that he, to show the difference, so he's used the stack bar charts, but the difference is basically the extra trail users or, or users um, or counts that happened in 2020 on top of 2019. So you basically see, you know, if 2020 was like 2019, it would be the light blue, but no, it's the dark blue. So it's the other stuff on top. And the use of this orange line to show when the COVID crisis began and the impact it had is really clever. And what you should check out in his um, interactive version is the filter at the top. So, you know, this is just the image, but as you hover uh, or and click on these different selections, you get the total of, walkers and cyclists, and then you get cyclists on their own and walkers on their own. So it's really, really cool. And I think this is a very cool first submission from Midi to the Make of a Monday project. And I hope he joins us again next week. 
Next up, we have Danel. D Danel. Um, sorry, I hope that's the correct way to pronounce your name. And he's done a very simple bar chart with the change between 2019 and 2020. I really like that. I like that I have a reference point for each month. Um, that there's a, a really neat annotation and the subtitle. It's nice and simple. The icon, you know, is suitable. It's not over the top. It doesn't distract me. It just takes a bit, of, a bit of space to, you know, remind me of what the topic is. And I think this is well done and uh, a really clean design. And then we have Zoe Tran, who has created her first data visualization in Tableau and has jumped straight into the favorites. Why, you might ask? Well, I think this is really nice. The title, not only digital, but also physical, makes me think, oh, what is she talking about? But the subtitle immediately explains it. And what I really like is that summary of the total uh, bike counts in year 2019 compared to 2020. You see the difference. You also see the difference um, over time in the uh, chart below. And then a short explanation in that little uh, annotation in the middle. So welcome to Makeover Monday. Welcome to also the, the community that uses Tableau. It's a community of um, very fanatical, in a good way, enthusiastic users. So I hope we will also see you back. And then we have Alice. And Alice has created this very outdoorsy, green-looking uh, area chart again. Uh, similar to a previous one we saw comparing 2019 and 2020. And I love the title. The off-roads less traveled makes me curious. She's got some buttons so you can filter to bikes or pedestrians. And she's got those nice big ass numbers on the left side showing the total counts and the percentage change. And then we have Vivian Ho. And what I really like here is a super simple area chart where the, you know, the one in front is white, so that it gives it kind of this illusion that there's only the, the area in between, so the difference between the two years being shaded. I love the font of the title and subtitle. It's really sharp, and the annotations help see, okay, so we've got this COVID crisis having a huge spike, but then also where does the decline start? And I'm guessing, I mean, the decline kind of starts as a seasonal thing as well as it gets colder, but what I like is that she highlighted that in 2020, because we're still all living through this pandemic and we might just have more time as we're not commuting as much, there's a decline that starts actually later. And uh, I really like just how she's put this together. We've got Fred Najar also joining us in the favorites this week. And I love how he's picked up the the logo from this, um, the Rats to Trails Conservancy, conservancy sorry and he's picked up the colors from that logo to take throughout his viz and he's shown the difference now i do have to call out yes he has used yoy as as a um, acronym in there but it's by far not as prominent as in some other vizes so i i think that's uh, we can forgive that and yeah well done fred and last but certainly not least, Madeleine Arnold. She's also doing her first ever Makeover Monday viz. I'm not sure how we have people now joining us who are so good already for their first viz. Uh, we have certainly seen a huge increase in skill and this is very well done. I like, so in viz review, um, Michelle and I discussed use of colors and how colors tend to work better if they are in theme. And yes, light blue and purple probably are not what we think of when we look at bikes and or bike uh, cycling and walking. But because this looks more like a business type visualization, I think it works with that gray background and, you know, the descriptions, the font type. This is really well put together. And I love the reference area that shows the, star, the sharp increase as we all kind of went into our various lockdowns, but especially, of course, this for the US data. So those were your lessons learned and your favorites for week one of 2021. And I hope you'll join us again next week when we do a collaboration with Operation Fistula once again for our Viz5 challenge. So Operation Fistula have kicked off this project last year with us and we're collaborating to visualize topics about gender inequality. Viz5 being named that way because it relates to the SDG number five, which is about gender equality. So the same process happens for Maker One Day, 
Andy publishes the data on Sunday with all the supporting information. And for these Viz5 challenges, we tend to provide more information. So you get a data set. Instead of a public article, you get a PDF document that um, explains everything. You also get a PDF document with a data dictionary that explains the different fields in the data set. And then you get a bunch of images that you can use in your uh, visualizations. These include logos, etc. And uh, these are gender equality topics, like I said. So we hope that many of you will participate because this is a chance to help Operation Fistula and the organizations they partner with to bring awareness to these gender inequality topics and build visualizations that they can use to share their message. Basically, you guys give them access to your skills and it really helps them to raise the profile and uh, of these organizations and raise awareness for the topics they care about. And it's been a huge success. We've had, I think, over 1,700 visualizations completed for this 5 from March to December last year. And we hope that you'll participate and support us in that as well. So with that said, enjoy your weekend, have a good time, stay safe, stay warm or cool if you live down under. And we hope to see you back on Monday, bright and bushy-tailed and ready to visit again. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.